Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and today I'm going to show you how to make a physical model of a guitar using the modal bank module and it's going to sound a little something like this. If you guys like this tutorial, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we're coming out with a new reactor tutorial every week. All right, so to begin, let's add a modal bank to our ensemble. And you're going to find that in the filter menu. And this is a module that scares off a lot of beginners. It's one of the most complicated ones in reactor. You can see in the info box that the modal bank is a group of parallel resonant bandpass filters. And these individual filters are called partials. And you can set the number of partials in a modal bank using the number input, which is the top input to the module. So let's just create a constant there. So by default, it's going to give us 64 partials. And clearly, there's just not room um, in the reactor interface for us to be able to address 64 different filters here. So we use a different system where first we tell the modal bank using the index input which partial that we're talking about. And then we can send values to the ratio, the gain, the amplitude left, the amplitude right, and the decay inputs of the modal bank. All right, so let's just talk about some of these parameters. The ratio is telling you how the bandpass filter's resonant frequency relates to the pitch of the modal bank. So an input, a ratio of one means that the bandpass filter is going to be at the same spot that the incoming pitch is. A ratio of two means it'll be at double the frequency. A ratio of three means it'll be at triple the frequency, etc. So by default, um, these are just gonna load up in a logical fashion like that. Um, so each partial is gonna have a ratio equal to its index number. And as it works out, that's exactly how the partials in an ideal guitar will sound. So we can just leave that as it is. And when I say ideal guitar, uh, that's what we're going to be modeling today, um, is an ideal vibrating string. Um, and what ideal means is that it's, um, you know, we're not factoring in stuff like gravities pulling down on the string in one direction and other crap like that. So it's just a simplified ideal model. So the ratios we can just leave disconnected. The gain we can leave disconnected as well. It's for uh, dynamically altering the amplitude of a partial, um, which we're not really going to need for creating a guitar sound because you don't really do that with a guitar. So we'll just ignore that one as well. And next we have the amplitude left and amplitude right inputs. And an ideal string um, has each partial has the uh, same amplitude. So I'm just going to create a value of one and set that to be our amplitude value. But we do need to set it up so that each partial receives that value individually. So I'm going to use an iteration module to do so. Um, we're going to have 63 extra events. Each extra event is going to increase by a value of 1 and we're going to send the iteration a value of 1 to begin with. So we're going to get uh, 64 events out of the iteration module ranging from 1 to 64. And we'll use those in conjunction with an order module to first set up the index to tell the modal bank which partial we're working with. and we can use the next output of the order module to trigger the amplitude inputs of the modal bank. And finally we can use the gate output of the iteration module in conjunction with a separator. So the gate is going to send a value of 1 before the iteration starts. It'll send a value of 0 after it's done. 
So we're going to use a separator so that when we get a value of zero, we're going to send an event to the apply input of the modal bank. This is a very important step that I left out earlier. Um, once you're done setting the index and setting your parameters, you need to send a, an event to the apply input, and that will apply all of the changes that have happened since the last um, apply has been received. All right, so we have the amplitudes and partials of our modal bank set up. We can supply the pitch input with a simple pitch module. And while we're at it, we can create a MIDI gate module. And we're going to use this to trigger our iteration. So we'll use an order module to make sure we trigger the iteration first. And this is going to set up all our partials for us, which isn't really necessary at every gate press as it is right now, but it will be a little bit later on in this tutorial. So just planning for the future here. Um, we actually don't need to trigger the apply input with the gate because it's happening off of the iteration anyway. Um, but we do need to trigger an envelope to send some sound into our modal bank. So I'm going to use an AD envelope. And basically, I'm going to leave the attack into decay times at zero. And this is just going to create a quick impulse sound that is basically modeling um, hitting a string with a picker with your finger. And we'll multiply the gate by a knob that's going to control the amplitude of our sound and the amplitude of our envelope, which will in turn uh, control the amplitude coming out of our partials. And we can put that into the bottom audio input of our modal bank and the there, we have two audio inputs here and the uh, top one is for continuous sounds the bottom one is for impulses like we have here All right, so this kind of sounds like garbage still, and the reason is that um, while all the partials of a ideal string have the same amplitude, they don't have the same decay time. And the ones at higher frequencies are going to decay faster than the ones at lower frequencies. So what I'm going to do is create a decay knob. Um, by default, all of our R partials um, right now have a decay of 60. Um, we can have the decay knob range from 20 to 80, and we're going to subtract a value from it that's going to get larger um, at the higher indexes. So we're just going to multiply our index by a um, knob, and we'll subtract the value that we come out up with um, from our decay time. So far, uh, damp time here is ranging from 0 to 1. Um, we're going to be subtracting, you know, up to 64 from whatever our decay time is, depending on the value of our partial. And this is going to create a much more lifelike guitar sound. Alright, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our website. I'm coming out with a new Reactor tutorial every week. Uh, I hope to see you next week.